it's time to fuel our thoughts. And we now invite our first speaker for today's scientific session, Professor Dr. V. Vanita Madam, Professor and HUD, Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Kilpak Medical College, Chennai. Let me give a brief synopsis of Madam's profile. Madam completed MBBS from Kilpak Medical College, Masters in uh, Obstetrics and Gynecology from IOG EGMO, and then fetal medicine training at Government RSRM Hospital, Chennai, and trained in uh, microsurgical recanalization. Her areas of special interest include treating uh, high risk obstetrics cases. So let me hand over the session to Professor Dr. Vanita Madam.
good morning Re respected hod uh, professor of biochemistry meera madam and uh, professors delegates and uh, all the dignitaries uh, good warm good morning to one and all uh, i i would like to congratulate meera Ma madam and uh, thank meera madam for giving me this opportunity it's a very challenging topic uh, uh, for taking such a challenging topic as the topic for cme and uh, i was offered the topic of genetics of parturition uh, but unfortunately i didn't have the time to prepare for that and i chose this topic which is uh, pertaining more to obstetrics and gynecology so my topic will be on dysmorphology and genetic syndromes i'll just outline the uh, topic uh, i'll just uh, deal how, i'll i'll just explain how we go about evaluation of a case of dysmorphology and finally offer the genetic counseling so what is this morphology it is a young and uh, uh, upcoming field of uh, ge medical genetics this uh, morphology refers to the discipline of clinical genetics which studies and attempts to interpret patterns of human growth and structural defects in other words this morphology refers to study of disorder development or congenital malformations the field that covers broadly congenital malformation that are apparent before the time of birth or at the time of birth so two settings we have to in uh, dysmorphology study we have that is uh, before the time of birth and at the time of birth dysmorphology is the science of studying abnormal forms with special emphasis on subtle findings which provide clue to an under underlying diagnosis a uh, lock of hair which is hypopigmented or in the uh, ultrasound a soft marker that subtle signs we have to pick up and then we have to go to the diagnosis of a genetic syndrome that is all about dys dysmorphology so most dysmorphisms are associated with genetic syndromes dysmorphology in fetus and recognition of genetic syndromes helps in communicating to the patients the structural problems which are obvious on the ultrasound and the effects of possibility of intellectual disability this is the most important thing in for intellectual disability assessment there is no uh think uh, in the ultrasound but from the diagnosis of genetic syndrome we uh, come to the conclusion that this structural problem will be associated with uh, some intellectual dis uh, disability and this helps in decision making for the ntp in the postnatal period once a baby is born uh, there also the study of dysmorphism facilitates appropriate postnatal management also provides a recurrence risk estimate for subsequent consumptions and offer definite prenatal diagnosis so this is the crux of we are taking up the field of dysmorphology so uh, when coming to dysmorphology we have five patterns on the ultrasound it can be a simple malformation pertaining to one organ example a congenital heart disease or a neural tube defect isolated malformation that is called the malformation a specific primary abnormality of development alone um, then we can should know what is the malformation syndrome example in down syndrome there will be a uh, collection of uh, uh, malformations for example cns defects congenital heart disease cleft lip all these together form the malformation syndrome what is malformation sequence when the primary event itself determines additional effects example in spina bifida what happens there is a problem is in the spine but subsequently she develops obstructive hydrocephalus and a club foot foot deformity all that so that is a malformation sequence the next will be in uh, malformation it will be deformity some develop normally organs that are developed normally but defects develop as a result of compression constriction or immobility example So, say a typical example will be severe oligohydramnios, leading to limb deformities like the club foot because of the severe oligohydramnios and the restricted mobility. And the other uh, uh, malformation will be disruptions. That is, uh, structurally normal baby will be there, but due to amniotic uh, bands, they will undergo amputation, and it will mimic a congenital malformation. So, coming to the etiological basis of these malformation syndromes. the one thing where it is very clear is the chromosomal syndrome these have been extensively studied the major chromosomal abnormalities as the down syndrome these all have the typical congenital uh, ultrasound features which have been picked up down syndrome trisomy 18 trisomy 13 klein falters 45x xyy triple x syndrome the uh, so these are triploidies the most cases of the chromosomal syndromes are sporadic but and uh, hence uh, it doesn't recur in subsequent pregnancy but it is important to recognize a small proportion where one parent is a balanced uh, carrier so counseling uh, will depend upon ruling out this balanced carrier state in the parent
next comes uh, uh, next to the chromosomal disorders the micro deletion syndromes chromosomal deletion that includes several genes that cannot be detected by the karyotype the micro deletion syndromes or the disordered function of specific genes that also lead to development of congenital malformation and the teratogenic syndromes uh, that, that uh, under teratogenic syndromes the infections the torch infection which we call it hepatitis syphilis uh, hiv all this can cause congenital malformation in the baby if in the embryo period before the 10 weeks of pregnancy. So drug-related teratogenic symptoms like thalidomide, warfare embryopathy, alcohol, uh, anti-epileptic drugs, sex hormones, and um, AC inhibitors, all this can cause teratogenic syndromes. And metabolic teratogenic syndromes will be phenyl ketonuria that can even lead to cardiac defects. So whenever we come across any fetal abnormality in the ultrasound, uh, the common fetal abnormalities and the etiologies are given in this chart. The fe common fetal uh, abnormality with the midline facial defects like nasomaxillary hypoplasia. That can be either be an induced effect by fetal warfare syndrome or maybe associated with genetic etiologies like chondrodysplasia punctata, the cutal syndrome, vitamin K metabolic defects. So our uh, focus will be to uh, study from the history whether uh, she has been in warfare and embryopathy, vitamin K deficiency, or it has an under uh, genetic etiology. All the three, all the things will present in the similar way. So we have to differentiate uh, fetal abnormality whether it's due to acquired or genetic etiology. Like Talipus equinovirus, there are almost 250 chromosomal syndromes associated with uh, Talipus equinovirus alone. So that should be differentiated from isolated talipus equivirus, which can be due to a simple oligohydramnios, uterine malformations. Uh, so the, the dysmorphologist will be able to do the, the geneticist, the fetal medicine specialist. So the case should be referred to a fetal medicine specialist. Whenever we find such isolated abnormalities, we have to go out and search for other associated anomalies in the ultrasound and markers. Cleft lip. It can be a multifactorial fetal hydrantoin or other chromosomal problems. Similarly, ventricular megaly, hydroxyphetalis, neural tube defects, all this can have a genetic syndromic effect also. So how do we diagnose, uh, what is the diagnostic approach to a dysmorphic child? Dysmorphic child uh, is uh, maybe uh, it, uh, immediately soon after delivery, uh, we diagnose a dysmorphism in the child. The uh, pediatrician comes and says, the face, uh, madam, the face doesn't look all right. It has a, a typical face. Is. So we have to go back to the antenatal history, a full three generation pedigree analysis, examination, a photography, radiography, if the fetus has uh, been dead born, cytogenetic study in all dysmorphic, whether it is alive or dead, we have to do the cytogenic studies. Biochemical studies is helpful in some cases like peroxisomal disorders such as the Zellweger syndrome and lysosomal storage. These are the two indications for biochemical studies. Molecular analysis, which is being uh, taken up on a large scale now, autopsy and careful literature search for such uh, uh, abnormalities, discussion, presentation, and use, use of a computer database. All these are needed when we approach a uh, dysmorphic child. So what do we ask in the antenatal history? It mainly the potential teratogens, that is the drugs which have been taken in the embryo, embryo period. High-grade fever, exposure to environmental toxins, torch infections, screening. So history of previous pregnancy losses will give a clue to genetic disorders, termination due to overlapping findings in the previous pregnancies, uh, which the, the mother may not be aware, but the records have to be uh, gone through, and the ultrasound findings of the previous termination should be looked into, neonatal deaths in uh, previous pregnancy, previous uh, live abnormal offspring in the family indicate possibility of genetic disorder in the family. Family history, a three-generation family pedigree should be obtained immediately. History of any consanguinity in all the generations, especially the second degree and uh, below, increases the risk of autosomal recessive disorders and previous uh, children born with similar phenotype in any of the family members. Other members with recurrent uh, pregnancy losses, infertility, all this history should be elicited. So this is the algorithm which we should adopt in a case of dysmorphism. In two settings, we meet dysmorphic babies. One is the uh, antenatal ultrasound finding where the patient comes and gives us the antenatal ultrasound showing a, a congenital uh, malformation, how to go about, she'll be asking. Or immediately after delivery, uh, we'll be having an abnormal uh, fetus. So in the antenatal ultrasound, if, uh, an, uh, if a malformation uh, comes, we have to go and look for the soft markers. Soft markers, whether it is single soft marker or multiple soft markers. So by soft markers, we mean 
choroid plexuses, echogenic bowel, uh, cardiac uh, foci, uh, dilated renal pelvis, all these will be soft markers. A single soft marker is mostly insignificant and disappears as the baby grows. But uh, associated anomalies we have to look for. And multiple soft markers usually uh, <laughs> calls for a screening, biochemical screening and targeted ultrasound. And malformations, where we have to lo look for whether it's a simple uh, cardiac defect isolated or multiple cardiac defects. Whenever the uh, multiple defects are present, it mostly signals a genetic syndrome. Uh, not alone the anomalies, the growth and uh, growth uh, abnormalities also should be looked for, uh, like our abnormalities. And uh, if uh, necessary, we, we may need a fetal MRI for the CNS defects and a 3D ultrasound for any facial dysmorphism. We require all the supporting things. And uh, after an antenatal ultrasound, uh, and when we suspect a malformation, we are supposed to uh, order for invasive testing. The whole standard will be an amniocentesis, and or uh, if it is late, we can do a cardiocentesis or placental biopsy. And then we send the blood sample or the uh, amniotic fluid for fetal karyotype, chromosomal microarray, biochemical uh, testing, and exome sequencing. That leads to the diagnosis of a fetal syndrome, and then we should be offering the counseling. So this is the algorithm to be followed when we uh, meet a baby with a uh, abnormality uh, on ultrasound. Similarly, if the baby is dead born, then we should do a postmortem examination and the same fetal tissue sampling and the same studies, fetal karyotype, microarray, biochemical testing, exome sequence. Due to genetic etiology or an isolated abnormality, uh, it may be associated with other malformations or growth abnormalities. So, serial ultrasound for growth abnormalities monitoring. Specific septum of ab abnormalities may be characteristic of specific genetic syndromes. Example, the Meckel Gruber syndrome, where it, there will be uh, encephalocele, polyductly, and multicystic dysplastic kidney. So, the spectrum of abnormalities we have to uh, uh, record and then go to the uh, fetal medicine. So, we have a syndromic diagnosis at hand. As a rule, multiple abnormalities indicate the possibility of genetic syndrome, whereas a single malformation may or may not be of genetic uh, etiology. Soft markers, already we have talked about it, and growth abnormalities and lighter abnormalities also should be looked for in an ultrasound. What do you mean by soft markers? Ultrasound findings that may be seen in a normal fetus also. So we should not make the patient panic when we see soft markers on ultrasound, like a choroid plexus cyst. Uh, so ultrasound that may be seen on a normal fetus, but they may weigh indicators of syndromic etiology or chromosomal disorders in some fetuses alone. So presence of multiple soft markers increases the risk of chromosomal aneuploidy. For each soft marker, the risk of chromosomal disorder has been statistically quantified and will uh, tables are there. So for, uh, we have to explain with that the risk of uh, chromosomal anomaly. And this is, the in, this is integrated with maternal demographics, the age and the maternal serum screening risk and used to provide the final aneuploidy risk. So, so we have the soft marker risk plus the uh, serum screening risk plus the age related risk and the NT scan if it is done early. And decision for invasive testing should be taken and karyotyping. We see in trisomy 21, other trisomies, known and syndromes, skeletal dysplasia, achondrogenesis, osteogenesis imperfecta, the absent nasal bone. Short long bones mainly seen in Down syndrome, skeletal dysplasia, syndromes with primordial short stature also. So multiple uh, cystic dysplastic kidney that also signals a uh, abnormal uh, genetic uh, in trisomy 13 Meckel Gruber syndrome. So as I said, growth and liker abnormalities are uh, often overlooked. 
fetal uh, growth restriction or fetal overgrowth can be associated with commonly maternal uteroplacental uh, problems. But intrinsic fetal abnormality is also an option in, uh, when we talk about genetic syndrome, there is a possibility of growth disorders and like abnormalities also. For as an example, an IUGR may be seen in chromosomal or various gene disorders like microcephalic, osteodysplastic dwarfism, sickle syndrome, and SLOS, smith uh, lemley optus syndrome, russell Silver syndrome. All these may present with IUGR. Fetal overgrowth is often seen with beckwith weidman syndrome, pallister killian syndrome, and Weaver syndrome. Hence, always look in, when you suspect syndromes, you look for the facial dysmorphism and other malformations and growth up. Now, at times, maternal serum screening gives clue to the genetic etiology. Example, low level in SLOS and high AFP. Go back to the uh, uh, serum screening reports and confirms the diagnosis. Macrosomia, when you have, uh, along with that, you have a high AFP in that report, then it, uh, be, uh, beckwith weidman syndrome can be confirmed. Like our abnormalities, both oligo and poly can be due to genetic abnormalities. Example, the Barter syndrome may have polyhydrons, salt-losing enteropathy along with the uh, multiple defects of polyhydrons present with polyhydramnios. Likewise, um, autosomal does polycystic kidneys which have a genetic uh, etiology also results in uh, oligohydramnios. Maternal screen, uh, serum screening, the importance can be used only in a few chromosomal abnormalities as we know in Down syndrome. Finally, coming to the fetal autopsy, is th this is the most valuable tool we have to offer counseling for what to do for the next pregnancy. It, uh, it includes a stepwise evaluation, the ex uh, external dysmorphological evaluation combined with an internal dissection and taking radiographs. In external dysmorphological examination, the anthropometric step-by-step -step we have to go crown ramp length, crown heel length, head circumference, chest circumference, abdominal circumference, foot length, arm length, interorbital distance, the inner out canthal distance, the outer canthal distance, head, uh, hand length, philtrum, phallus, limb segment, all this should be taken in a, and pro forma we should have and record it uh, one below the other. And it should be compi compared to the percentile charts for that specific gestational age. Uh, head to toe examination for dysmorphic features that should be recorded separately. Shape, size and appearance and deviation from the normal should be mentioned. Placenta, membranes and cords should also be commented. The common uh, dysmorphic syndromes, the radial ray defect and the genetic uh, uh, syndromes associated with that. It can be a trisomy 18, bacterial uh, association, the TAR syndrome and polydactyly. It can be the trisomy 13, overlapping fingers in trisomy 18. Uh, so many syndromes are there and so fetal autopsy, uh, we have to uh, look for what abnormality and we have to refer the, all the syndromes with that abnormality and into what syndrome. The associated on one, one or two anomalies, they will be given the ultrasound, but a fetal autopsy adds to the diagnosis and confirmation of the which genetic syndrome it fits in. Also, we should subject that uh, baby uh, fetus, uh, dead born fetus to the whole body. It's usually, it should be done within one week or two weeks. It should be completed. The fetal autopsy should be completed and handed over. Uh, whole body X-ray AP as well as a lateral view to know whether it's appropriate ossification of bones or any dysplasias are there. Documentation and timing of fractures if you are present, the documentation and timing of fractures. Presence of ectopic mineralization in non-bony tissues. Example, heart, arteries, bubble, lumen. That may signal, signal an occurrence, thought infection, metabolic disorders, HIE, and bowel abnormalities. Gross and internal organs, gross examination, and uh, HPE of the fetal organs. All organs should be weighed and documented uh, using an uh, HPE using hematoxylin, eosin, eosin stain, special stain if necessary, and even immunohistochemistry if needed. Uh, renal pathology, it's very, very useful uh, when we suspect renal pathology to differentiate whether it's a cystic disease, differentiate between the various cystic diseases. Autosomal, some, some are autosomal recessive, dominant adult polycystic kidneys, multicystic kidneys, glomerulocystic kidneys. The confirmation can be obtained from renal pathology study. Placental histopathology, evidence of any placental insufficiency and fetal infection should be looked into. So, uh, the testing of a dysmorphic fetus, which disorder to test for what? 
for um, the common uh, genetic disorders that lead to dysmorphism are the chromosomal disorders, which can be numerical chromosomal disorders or structural chromosomal disorders, single gene disorders, about 6,000 are there, uh, uh, genomic disorders, imprinting, these are the broad classification, chromosomal, single gene, genomic disorders, and imprinting disorders. Karyotyping requires viable cells, and hence the karyotype sample should be sent within 48 hours of collection of the sample. Fetal DNA extraction can be obtained from any fetal sample, including umbilical cord, and storage can be done at 2 to 8 degree for a few weeks, and minus 20 degree for a long term also, we can store this tissue for fetal DNA analysis. But karyotyping has to be done immediately. Cytogenetics testing on a dysmorphic fetus in chromosomal disorders account for 10 to 30 percent of genetic syndromes. It's a well-described uh, entity with phenotypic disorders. Example, Down syndrome, Turner syndrome, Parthaus, Edwards. All these are easily nowadays diagnosed on a uh, targeted ultrasound. But we have to confirm by a karyotype analysis, either from amniocentesis, cardiocentesis blood, or intracardiac blood, or skin fibroblast. So karyotype analysis is the gold standard in diagnosing the chromosomal disorders. For single gene disorders, due to mutation in involved genes, it occurs for 20 to 30 percent of uh, uh, the, uh, dysmorphic uh, fetus, 6,000 single gene disorders, and the molecular basics are known in 4,000. So, fetal sampling followed by next generation sequencing uh, for these uh, genes to arrive at a diagnosis can be done. So, the various genomic disorders, these are copy number abnormalities in genome. It can be a small microscopic micro deletions, micro duplication part of genome accounts for 6 to 10 percent of uh, dysmorphisms. So, you be employ the molecular cytogenetic uh, techniques and chromosomal microarray is very helpful in these disorders. So, imprinting disorders are very rare disorders of dysmorphism. Uh, presence with the uh, fetal abnormality, especially growth disorder, as we said, the Be Beckwith Vitamin Syndrome. Presence with overgrowth, organomegaly, omphalocele, and polyhydramnum. So, if you see all these four, uh, it, it's almost a Beckwith Weidman syndrome. And uh, uh, Ralph Weber syndrome presence with fetal growth restriction, and these can be confirmed by methylation studies of fetal DNA so that we can offer counseling in the next pregnancy. So, what is the recurrence risk on uh, malformation syndromes? Recurrence is uh, greatest for autosomal recessive and uh, X linked recessive disorders. The common autosomal recessive disorders are the body beetle syndrome, campomelic dysplasia, which was skeletal dysplasia, chondro dysplasia punctata, holoprosen cephaly, Meckel syndrome. Uh, autosomal dominant will be uh, Beckwith vitamin, craniosynostosis, Holtorum, Nail Patella, Wardenburg, Nunes, and uh, Optus syndrome. So finally, coming to the uh, main uh, thing, uh, after we do a thorough uh, evaluation of a dysmorphic uh, uh, fetus or uh, going through the ultrasound features and uh, taking the lab tests and uh, screening genetic tests, we come to the conclusion and we offer genetic counseling for the uh, mother, explaining the prognosis. If a baby is born alive with dysmorphism, the postnatal surgeries for structural anomalies as it is very advanced stage now, the uh, structural anomalies can be easily corrected with the uh, surgical surgeries. But the uh, possibility of intellectual ha handicap and since we have to suggest MTP if she comes early, the recurrence uh, risk estimate helps in availing the prenatal diagnosis mainly. You work out the recurrence risk and prenatal diagnosis uh, um, confirmed with lab and then early CVS can be are done for those patients in the uh, next pregnancy, advice for an early chorionic villus sampling. So, I conclude saying this morphology, uh, the, uh, um, the branch of genetics is a, it's a very primary and indispensable tool that aids in uh, perinatal diagnosis and uh, management of these genetic syndromes in these babies. So, I once again thank uh, the Department of Biochemistry for this opportunity. Thank you, madam.